Hello guys, Chris here, welcome back to another video. In this one, my friends, we're going to be testing the i7-4770K in Hogwarts Legacy. Now, this is going to be my first CPU benchmark here in this game, and I will test a few other CPUs as well. And for a CPU benchmark, we need a CPU bottleneck 100% of the time. So I chose to pair it with the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 36. It's not too overkill. You know, I could have put the 48 in there. We'd get the same results but uh, I, I chose to keep it a little bit more realistic you know <laughs> although it's still gonna be cpu bound all of the time the 3060 that we're using is the afox model 12 gigabyte version of the card and we're running it with the latest nvidia drivers as usual you can see all of the gpu specs right here it's running in pci express 3.0 times 16 because the platform is old and you can see the i7 once again here in cpu z it's overclocked to 4.1 gigahertz it's not a big OC by any means, but I'm actually running the stock cooler here, so I'm not pushing it further than that. But it's still above stock speeds. Uh, it's a 4-core, 8-threaded CPU, of course, and in the memory tab we are running 16 gigabytes of DDR3, clocked at 1600 megahertz, which is always double than that in dual channel. You can also see the memory here in Task Manager. Same thing that I said previously, and let's get into the game now, shall we? All right, take a look at that GPU utilization. Again, if it's not maxed out, that means that we are in a CPU bound scenario or CPU bottleneck scenario, and that's exactly what we want here in this video all of the time. Uh, we're also playing this at 1080p lowest settings, low with TAA on low as well. I will show you that in just a little bit. And as you can see, it is starting to stutter quite a bit. That frame time graph is not as smooth as on a GPU bound scenario, but you know what? It is still still pretty playable in my opinion, especially if you lock the FPS so you don't strain the CPU as much. You know, CPU usage is at like 50 to 60%, so it's utilizing the entire four physical cores of the i7-4770K uh, and going up into the hyper-threading just a little bit, you know? But yeah, this game is super, super CPU bound, especially in Hogwarts and Hogsmeade, which uh, we will take a look at in just a little bit. Uh, uh, so I'm very surprised, at least for now, uh, to see 70 frames per second or 65 there on average. That's really good. Fighting some bastards right here, some bobs. <laughs> um, things are not really dropping by that much. It's still getting around the same FPS and the same overall experience as previously. And... I really like this, honestly, guys. I think this is still a playable experience, especially in these forest areas and stuff like that. Now, going into the settings, we're playing at 1080p native using TAA on low, as I told you. FOV is set to the maximum there and the lowest settings. Everything, of course, as I told you. <laughs> but in case you don't believe me, well, this, this is here right now, all right? It also doesn't have any full screen mode in this game. That's why it's set to windowed full screen. And now let's go to Hogsmeade. Again, one of the most CPU intensive areas in the entire game. Okay, here we go, 50s, but we're standing still, you know, and whenever you're standing still, things are less intensive. Okay, as I started to move, you can see that frame time going to hell. Yep, that is that is pretty terrible, actually. I do not like this experience anymore. Oh boy, look at that GPU utilization as well, 30 to 40% usage there. So again, fully CPU bound scenario. 3060 can actually play this game quite well, as I showed in the 3060 benchmark video that I made. If you're interested in that, there is a link down below in the description for that video. But yeah. This is not good, guys. <laughs> it was pretty impressive previously, like flying around the woods area and stuff like that. But now in Hogsmeade with all of these NPCs around us, uh, it's just, it's pretty terrible, right? What's worse is the FPS themselves, like 40 to 50 frames, those are actually really decent, right? I don't have a problem with that, but with this much stuttering, it becomes very unplayable. That frame time is never smooth, guys. This is 
This is pretty terrible, unfortunately. I would not recommend anybody to play like this. It's not like a RAM limitation either, by the way. I've played this game with 16 gigabytes of RAM and the Ryzen 7 5700G with various GPUs, and that system was capable of achieving pretty stable frame rates, although never 100% stable because the game is kind of broken in that regard. But yeah, uh, this, this is like terrible again i i do not recommend this to anybody but you know what we should try it out with the frame rate limit here in rivet tuner statistics server it's a free program you can uh, install it and lock the fps right here locking the fps inside of the game doesn't do anything but here i heard that it actually makes things very smooth and what we're doing here by uh, capping the frame rate at 30 frames per second is making it so it doesn't fully saturate our CPU. So the CPU utilization went down right now. It's between like 30 to 50% most of the time, even dropping down into the 20% range. And now you can see that the frame time, yeah, it does have some spikes there, but it is way smoother. Like it's 30 FPS. I do not like gaming experiences at 30 fps but if i didn't really have anything else um other more expensive systems to play it with you know i would probably be fine with this experience since it does not stutter you know i prefer this at 30 fps with the one percent lows close to 30 and uh, basically like almost no stuttering then 60 fps with a heck of a lot of stuttering like we were seeing before so if you are playing this game and seeing a ton of stuttering because you have an older cpu and an older system check out if the gpu is actually being bottlenecked by the cpu because that's probably very likely the cause of the stuttering in your game. Also, I installed this on an SSD in this system, so there is no problem there in the storage department as well. Um, and yeah, this is now a very enjoyable experience for somebody who doesn't really care uh, about the 30 FPS lock, you know. Uh, I myself have played a ton of games at 30 frames per second and I was fine with that experience. So I think a lot of people will enjoy it. Look at those 1% lows now. It actually stabilized and it is at 30 FPS, same as the averages. So again, guys, older systems, lock your FPS either to 30 or 60, you know, some older CPUs when overclocked massively can probably achieve 60 FPS. And in this system, since it didn't really go below like 45 frames per second, we can also lock it to 45 and achieve the same frame rates as you can see right here. Although, no, eh, yeah, we can't really get stable 45. Uh, as, as you can see, guys, by the way, if you lock the FPS to a value that's higher than your 1% lows or minimum FPS, it's going to stutter anyways whenever the frame rate is below 40 frames per second or the lock that you set, basically. Now, lastly, I want to check it out in Hogwarts, which um, is usually even more CPU intensive than Hogsmeade. <laughs> so this is going to be terrible. I just removed the FPS lock as well. You can see 100 plus FPS there, basically. And here we are. Again, a ton of stuttering can be seen right now. That frame time is going crazy again. And this is nighttime as well, by the way. Uh, during the day, there are a lot more people running around here, and it's more CPU intensive. Uh, yeah, look at that, 30s. Mm, yeah, well, you, you definitely need to, to lock it to 30 FPS again with the i7-4770K. But first, I just waited until daytime, and I'm going to start counting the FPS. <laughs> <laughs> just to see how bad those 1% lows will be with this much stuttering. It is pretty terrible, guys. Hmm. What a shame. What a shame. At least you can lock the FPS to make it somewhat playable, right? Or actually very playable with 30 frames. Look at this. Even worse than during nighttime right now. Wow. It is insane. It's completely insane how bad it is. What the hell is this? Why is there a butterfly going around my my lumos thing i don't understand yeah not anymore i 
That's so awesome. weird. <laughs> Anyways, I was noticing the CPU usage yeah, going up to like 75%. Oh yeah, and a lot of people don't understand this, but you don't need to have 100% of CPU usage for it to be a CPU bottleneck scenario. In most cases, the games won't really max out your CPU because they're not coded um, to take advantage of all of the cores and threads. And it's quite a bit of a shame to see that Hogwarts Legacy, a game releasing in 2023, can't even fully utilize a four core eight threaded cpu not good optimization on the cpu side of things at all <laughs> so it's prioritizing faster cores than more cores basically all right back to locking it to 30 frames per second and we're just going to move around here once again see if it stutters and uh, nope apparently even in this area which is the most stuttering area that i've come across in this game it's not really stuttering too much Okay, th those frame time spikes right there, those were noticeable, but again, if you get used to the 30 FPS experience, um, a couple of stutters here and there are just going to be normal, like it happens even on my 4080 system, and you can actually have fun. Over here is the same story, a couple of bigger spikes right there. So it doesn't really solve all of the stuttering issues, but it definitely makes it playable and way, way smoother, even though we're uh, locking it to a lower frame rate. So that's been it for this video, guys. The i7-4770K is 13 years old at the moment, yet it can still play Hogwarts Legacy if you care enough to lock the FPS or install a, a program that you can lock the FPS with. And of course, if you're not running something like a GT710, because <laughs> if you are running something like that, well, good luck. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching this one, by the way. Hope you enjoyed it. It was only a single setting tested because, you know, uh, usually a lot of the settings aren't really CPU demanding. They're more GPU demanding and to fully get a CPU bound scenario, uh, I chose to set everything to low. So we were 100% CPU bound in this video. And chances are, if you are playing on an i7-4770K, you probably have a slower GPU as well. So you will likely play on low settings. And low settings in this game also look really good. So that's been it, my friends. Thank you very much for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll catch you in the next one very soon. Love you all. Bye-bye.